Want to own a slice of one of the best businesses out there? Would your portfolio be improved by adding a debt-free dividend aristocrat to it? Looking for a good deal on a great stock in an expensive market? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I wanna tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is a world-class asset manager profiting from global capital markets. Capitalism, doesn't that word just give you the warm and fuzzies? This company is directly exposed to capitalism in its most extreme form through global capital markets. And as global assets continue to rise, this company makes more money through the asset management fees it charges. And more money means more dividends. I personally invest in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I wanna share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of T. Rowe Price Group, Inc., which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. T. Rowe Price Group, Inc., stock ticker TROW, is a large investment management company that manages assets for individual and institutional investors. Founded in 1937, T. Rowe Price is now a $43 billion by market cap investment management colossus that employs more than 7,000 people. With approximately $1.6 trillion in assets under management, T. Rowe Price ranks as one of the largest U.S.-based asset managers. Asset management is an exceptional business model. This is because of its structure. See, T. Rowe Price charges fees to manage assets, and there are multiple growth paths for the fees, one of which is exponential. First, asset managers like T. Rowe Price naturally have a lot of exposure to global equities. And since global equities are almost certainly headed higher over the longer term, the company should benefit from the aggregate of the world's growth. The fee base is exponentially rising. Plus, clients and the associated assets tend to be sticky. This limits outflows, which helps the firm to ride out volatility. Stimulative fiscal and monetary policies of late have created unprecedented levels of liquidity, intensifying the already favorable dynamics that T. Rowe Price enjoys. Most asset classes have gone on huge runs directly helping the likes of T. Rowe Price. Simply put, the underlying business model is advantageously located in a rising tide, capital markets, that's lifting all boats, participants in said capital markets. Thus, fees have a built-in escalator, higher AUM, higher fees. Then there's the high performance, which improves the company's reputation, keeps those assets sticky, and provides a higher fee base. Regarding T. Rowe's price's performance, Morningstar states this, and I quote, at the end of 2020, 83%, 79%, and 77% of the company's fund AUM were beating peers on a three, five, and 10-year basis, respectively, with 77% of AUM in the funds closing out the year with an overall rating of four or five stars, better than just about every other US-based asset manager, unquote. In addition, T. Rowe Price has more ordinary growth paths in front of it, such as offering more products, more services, and acquiring more customers. One product that's been especially successful for the company is their target date retirement offerings, which have generated just under $100 billion in net inflows over the last decade. With such an exceptional business model, it shouldn't be a surprise to see the company regularly growing its profit and dividend. Indeed, T. Rowe Price has increased its dividend for 35 consecutive years. That easily qualifies them for their status as a dividend aristocrat. 
Their 10-year dividend growth rate of 12.8% is strong, but what's been really impressive is the recent acceleration in, in dividend growth. The most recent dividend increase was 20%. I suspect that this trend will continue as the payout ratio is a low 32.6%. Meantime, you're also able to lock in a market beating 2.3% yield that's within 30 basis points of its five-year average. These dividend metrics are fantastic. Looking at business growth, T. Rowe Price grew its revenue from $2.7 billion in fiscal year 2011 to $6.2 billion in fiscal year 2020. That's good for a compound annual growth rate of 9.5% tremendous. I usually look for a mid-single digit top line growth rate from a mature business like this. T. Rowe Price blew my expectations out of the water. Meanwhile, earnings per share advanced from $2.92 to $9.98 over this 10-year stretch, which is a compound annual growth rate of 14.6%. Excellent growth here, which speaks on everything I noted earlier about the exceptionality of the business model. A combination of margin expansion and share repurchases helped to produce excess bottom line growth. Regarding the latter, the outstanding share count is down by approximately 12% over over the last 10 years. Looking forward, CFRA is predicting that T. Rowe Price will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 14% over the next three years. CFRA highlights T. Rowe Price's, and I quote, strong market share, better than peer average ability to attract new investment, and relatively better than average investment performance, unquote. Also noted by CFRA is the fact that T. Rowe Price routinely repurchases its own shares. This provides a base level of earnings per share growth as there are simply less shares upon which to calculate net income. I see CFRA's forecast as safe and reasonable it's right in line with the demonstrated 10-year earnings per share growth rate, so we're assuming a continuation of the status quo. For perspective, T. Rowe Price's Q3 report for fiscal year 2021 showed 21.2% year-over-year growth. Admittedly, it was a great 12-month period for U.S. stocks, and T. Rowe Price has felt the gusting of this tailwind, but I think this Q3 report goes to show that there is no evidence of a slowdown, which means there is no reason to expect one. In addition, T. Rowe Price already announced that it agreed to buy alternative credit manager Oak Hill Advisors LP and related entities for $4.2 billion. This bolt-on acquisition, which will be funded by a combination of cash and stock, diversifies the company's offerings. More importantly, the company stated that the acquisition ex is expected to be accretive to fiscal year 2022 earnings per share, and I quote, by a low to mid single digit percentage, unquote. And that is meaningful. Overall, I see T. Rowe Price's future looking a lot like its past, which is to say the future looks very bright. And so I'd expect dividend growth to remain at least in the high single digit range for the foreseeable future. Moving over to the balance sheet, the company has a magnificent financial position. T. Rowe Price has no long-term debt. The balance sheet is flawless. Profitability is outstanding. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 34.7% and annual return on equity of 30.8%. Net margin has expanded significantly over the last decade. There is usually something to complain about when analyzing a business, be it a shaky balance sheet or underwhelming growth, one can almost always point to a fault or two. However, I find nothing to fault here. It's almost a perfect business. And with economies of scale, performance-oriented brand value, and switching costs that keep those assets sticky, the company does benefit from durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. The very business model is a risk due to the exposure to so much volatility from global capital markets. There's cyclical risk here. A recession would hurt asset valuations, AUM, fees, and profits. There has been a pronounced shift to passive funds throughout the industry, which reduces demand for active management and the associated fees. I view the company's size as somewhat of a risk. Their AUM base is so large at this point, it's difficult to grow at a material rate in percentage terms. While I think it's important to consider these risks, I see the overall quality of the business as very high and easily able to overcome the risks. And with the stock 14% off of its 52-week high, the valuation makes this a particularly compelling long-term idea right now. The stock is trading hands for a price earnings ratio of 14.5. That's much lower than the broader market's earnings multiple. It's also slightly discounted compared to the stock's own five-year average price earnings ratio of 15.5. For a company growing at about 14% per year, the current price earnings ratio implies a peg ratio of just one, and that's ludicrously low. And the yield, as noted earlier, is close to its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 8%. This dividend growth rate is at the highest end of what I will allow for, but if there's any company that deserves this designation, it's this one. As high as it might be, it's still lower than the company's demonstrated earnings per share and dividend growth over the last decade. It's also lower than the near-term forecast for earnings per share growth. With the payout ratio being so low, there's flexibility on top of the underlying high growth rate of the business. 
I think this is a reasonable long-term dividend growth expectation. If anything, they may very well exceed it over the next few years. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $233.28. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates T. Rowe Price as a three-star stock with a fair value estimate of $212. CFR rates T. Rowe Price as a three-star hold with a 12-month target price of $220. I came out a bit high, but the range here is fairly tight. Averaging the three, three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $221.76, which would indicate the stock is possibly 15% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. T. Rowe Price Group Inc. is one of the only companies I've ever come across that I'd be tempted to call perfect. The fundamentals are about as great as they can be, and the company is riding favorable fee-based exposure to global capital markets higher. With 35 consecutive years of dividend increases, a market-beating yield, a double-digit long-term dividend growth rate, a low payout ratio, and the potential that shares are 15% undervalued, this dividend aristocrat should be on every dividend growth investor's radar right now. And now for a special news announcement. William Sonoma Inc. stock ticker WSM just got an upgrade from Loop Capital Markets. Their new target price on the company is $205 a share, which is nearly 20% higher than the current price. I've covered this name numerous times on the channel as a high quality multi-channel retailer that's firing on all cylinders. The stock is down 18% over the last month, so this pullback could be a great opportunity to buy the dip. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including a link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.